4 verse 13. The Bible says, crowd to that period, after Jesus Christ was groomed and was now ready to enter into his ministry, he was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he fasted and communed with his father for 40 days and 40 nights. He was with the father. He was having fellowship with the father. In other words, his father was discussing how the assignment was to go. He was sharing with him. And after that 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says as soon as Jesus Christ was coming out of the wilderness, the first person he met was the devil. So just said a lot of things. Oh, you are the son of God. I know you have waited on the Lord. And now you will be hungry. What do you do? Since there is no food around, you have the power to do and to undo. Why don't you turn these stones to become bread? And because Jesus Christ was in the spirit, he replied him. As if that was not enough, he took him to the pinnacle of the temple. And the Bible says he showed him the glory of the world. And he said, if only you can see everything is at my disposal. Why don't you just bow down and worship me? And I will give you all these things. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to fight and to pray. You don't need to deny yourself of anything. Everything is at the tip of your finger. I will give everything to you. And because Jesus Christ was in the spirit, he was standing. What did he do? He said, you see, it is only God that you are supposed to worship. It is only God you are supposed to bow to. The devil did not stop there. What did he do? He took him to a very high mountain. He told him to jump down from the mountain up to waves. You are the son of God. What happens? He will give his hand a charge over thee. And so on and so forth. And the Bible says that in this particular verse, that after he has tempted him, he saw that there was no way to win. He did not leave him permanently. What did he do? He left him for a while. For a while. The devil does not go away permanently. We can cast him out of your life. We can cast him out of your business. We can cast him out of your marriage. We can cast him out of your life, your finances, in the church. But what about when you get home? What about when you get to your place of work? He's not giving up. Hallelujah. Amen. He does not give up. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the devil left him on a short time basis left him for a while for a season in other words he was going to re-strategize to come back amen some people they preach eternal security that is once you are born again you are eternally secure there will be no problem there will be no evil day Oh, you need to stand on the promise of God. Because the enemy is coming. Job, we were told in Job chapter 1, we were told that they were having a meeting. This was the church meeting. And I believe that it was God himself. Who called this meeting this morning? Is it not God that called this meeting? Where is he? He was supposed to be the chairman of this meeting. Where is he now? He's here. He's here. Do you know that he's here? He's here. And it was the same way he called a meeting. And all his children were gathered. And Job was there. And the Bible says that the devil also came. He was not invited in that meeting. But he came. What did he come to do? He's looking for those who are loose. He's looking for those who are not serious. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, he is walking up and down, looking for those who are not serious to devour. Tell somebody be serious. 
meaning tell your brother or your sister to be serious. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them be serious. Yeah. Be serious. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be serious, my brothers and my sisters. Because the devil we are wrestling with, he is very serious. As we are trying to win souls into the kingdom of God, he is also sending out demons to win souls into his kingdom. You will not be his member. I say you will not be won into his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. The Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not physical things. Oh, my brother, he is, look at the way he is looking at me. Oh, my brother, he saw me this morning, he didn't greet me. Those are not your enemies. The devil is just using those things to distract you. The real enemy, the real enemy, we don't see them physically. He comes deceptfully to bring down the glory of God upon our lives. But the Bible says we should be vigilant. That though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty to do what? Through God to pull down strongholds. You know? To pull down strongholds. <laughs> what are these strongholds? Those are the things after we have given testimony, they will say, hey, you think the battle is over? Okay, it's because you are in the church amongst the brethren. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, he said we should not forsake the assembly of the brethren together. As the matter of some is, as we are coming together here, there is a corporate anointing that is present in the house. Although you may be weak, but because you are in the midst of this corporate environment where the anointing of God is strong, the enemy may not be able to operate. But what of when you leave the church? You are no longer in the midst of the brethren. When you are harassed by the enemy, there may not be anybody immediately to, to, to shield you, to encourage you, because you are there on your own. Are you taking your stand? That is the question this morning. So the enemy should be able to know as God boasted with Job because he knew him inside out that no matter what it is, this one is taking his stand for me. And he called the devil, have you seen my servant? There is nobody like him. He is standing for me. Can God boast like that with you? Can God trust you to that extent to boast with you, you know, in the sight of the devil? I hope God will not put you into trouble. Because if you, Job, does God know you? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. Lest it fall. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Why was he saying this? Paul the apostle was narrating the experience of the children of Israel. When they left their bondage, they got their testimony. They got their victory. They got their deliverance. They sang. They praised God. If you read Exodus chapter 15, they sang and they testified of the goodness of God. But that it did not last. It did not last. Now, before that particular chapter was over, they began to complain of water. Ah, there is no water. They began to complain of one thing or the other. These are the people that just sang. These are the people that just praised. These are the people that were just glorifying God. These were the people that were just singing of the goodness of God. But because they did not take their stand, when the devil came like a mighty rustle wind, they fell like a pack of cats. I pray that you will not fall. 
I say you will not fall in the name of Jesus. So if you read the preceding verses before this verse, he said, let us not commit this. Let us not do this like as they did it. Let us not do this like as they did it. Let us not do this like as they did it. He said, wherefore, let him that is standing, let him stand very well before you fall down. I pray that none of us will fall. 